What's up, Sapu Nation? Can you guys hear me? If you can, leave a message here in the comment box. Uh, welcome to another Sipul Quarta. My name is Bruno. I'm part of the Sipul Tour crew. And today it will be a very special Sipul Quarta. It's also the anniversary of Kairos, you know, and uh, we're going to share some stories about that on their storyteller with our former German, Jean de la Bella. Uh, last week we had some problems with the subtitles, but we're going to fix that this week. Then you can review all the last storytellers with subtitles and everything. Today we will have uh, the live performance of Desperate Cry with some special guests, Jason Bittner and Philippe Roa. And the version was really amazing. And, uh, and we're going to have right now the live Q&A with our great, our great brother and drummer, Roy Mayorga, you know, who is going to be talking to Derek. And uh, right now I'm going to leave a quick message for the Brazilian fans. And we're going to start in a couple minutes. Uh, Bem-vindo, Sepul Nation, mais uma Sepul Quarta. Eu sou o Bruno, sou parte do, da equipe de Sepultura. E hoje vai ser uma Sepul Quarta muito especial. É aniversário do disco Kairos. E nós vamos compartilhar algumas histórias no Storyteller com o Jean de La Bella. Nos últimos dois Storytellers tivemos alguns problemas com as legendas aqui no YouTube, mas é, vão ser resolvidos ainda essa semana para você poder rever né, os últimos Storytellers com as legendas. É, tudo perfeito. E hoje a gente vai ter uma performance muito legal da Desperate Cry, que foi feita com convidados especiais, que foi o Jason Pittner e o Felipe Roa. Ficou muito legal a versão. E o Q&A hoje vai ser com o Roy Mayorga, que é, tocou no Sepultura, aí na turnê do, do Dante, é, no Soulfly, agora toca no Stone Sour. E vamos falar, fazer aqui as... Vocês podem mandar aqui as perguntas e fazer também as doações aqui. A gente vai colocar o QR Code daqui a pouco, como vocês viram no vídeo de introdução. E também tem a opção do Super Chat, né, que todo esse valor arrecadado a gente vai destinar para instituições que o Sepultura está ajudando e colaborando. Então, vamos começar aqui. Yo. Hello. <laughs> are, we, are we on? Is this thing working? <laughs> Can working. you hear me? It's working. What's, What's up, Roy? How you been? Man, thank, I've been fantastic, man. Thanks for uh, doing this. It's great to have you on our Sepul Quatra. Yeah, it's, thank you. Uh, it's it's been a minute since we uh, we talked. Yeah, I mean, the last time we all hung out and talked was probably like what four months, five months ago, at Nam. At the Nam. At the Nam. <laughs> Nam Rex. Yeah, that's right. That was the last time. That was pre uh, uh, COVID. Yeah. BC. Yeah, before that's COVID. Actually, you know what's funny? Because after Nam, I did get a little sick. You did? I think I might have even had it because I because a week after that, or actually a few days after that, I started coming down with those symptoms and I actually had to go on Ship Rock the following week to play with Hell wow. Yeah. And I was sick as a dog that whole time. It fucking sucked. And I was hacking up shit, couldn't barely breathe, and had a bit of a fever here and there. But then when I got home, I was all right. It like lasted within four or five days with me, and then I was fine. Yeah, I I know a few people that were saying the the same thing in January or December that they had these symptoms, but then they got tested later on. They found out that they didn't have, and it was just a flu. Well, that's like right. Really way, there's a way to find out if they had it or not. Which I still have to do that. But I mean, I've been all right. Been good so far, you know. Well, well, for people that don't know who you are. Um, Man, there's so many bands that I was like going through the list. I was like, my God, you know, it's like Stone Sour, Ministry, yeah, So Fly, Downset. I did play in Downset. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. For like a hot minute, like a I played minute. shows with them. Yeah. So technically, uh, I was their drummer, but not really. But I was, and it was a great time. All right, we'll we'll put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> Shelter. Yeah. Nausea. Yeah. And hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then Ambix. Ambix? How do you pronounce it? Amoebix. Jesus, I'm horrible, man. That's all right. Horrible pronunciation. People say all kinds of things, you know. They, 
It's a, it's a weird name, you know. You're not some people say Aimbix, you know, but it's Amoebix. <laughs> and where did you grow up? Just I, I just want some people to get a little bit of background of of who you are. So where did you grow up? Like what city? I grew up in a couple of different places though. I mean, originally from New York City, and I lived there for the first like six, five, six years of my life. And then uh, lived in Florida for a minute and then moved to Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia, and then back to New York once I was a little old enough to go on my own when I was a um, you know, teenager, I was 17, 18, and then just stayed there you know, until 1999, moved right. out. Yeah, a lot's happened since then. A lot's happened since then. <laughs> well, let's talk about how, I mean, we met each other in New York. And yeah. it was just from the scene, you know, the scene of Lori side, hanging out, going to shows. And uh, I believe you were working, you were engineering the sound at a few places, right? I was engineering at Wetlands actually when I first met you is when the Chromags first got together and you were you were you were teching for somebody in the band. I'm not sure who. Yeah, like for uh, Chromags, I was like John was like, "Yo, get on the stage and make sure these fools don't get up on the microphone." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were you were taking care of all kinds of stuff. But I remember that's when I first yeah. met. You. I was like what ninety. That's right. 95, 94. Yeah, like around then. Yeah, actually, John Joseph's when I introduced. Yeah, like ninety four. Yeah, Joseph introduced me to you. I remember that. And yeah, we've been, been friends ever since. And you've been working at Lakeside. I used to go to Lakeside, hang out, see you everywhere. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's cool, man. Lori Side. And so, in what have you been doing now? Like, wondering what we're talking about. This all took place in New York City in, in East Village. <laughs> Mid 90s. In East Village. Yes. And you know what was really crazy at that time of knowing you? We moved about the same time, right? Yeah, I say I was, we sure did. <laughs> <laughs> we so sure it was did. really cool. It's like we were auditioning. I don't know if a, a lot of people know this, but I was auditioning for Sepultura, and you were auditioning for Soulfly at the exact same time. I was yeah, like in '97. Um, it was pretty much uh, I yeah. went down, went down to Phoenix, you know, jammed with Max for a few weeks, and then got the call back, and then we continued from there. And then you got the gig with Sepultura. Yep. Yeah. Crazy man. I remember we were talking about it, um, just like kind of in shock. You know, at least I know I felt completely shocked. Me too. It was just like, what's going on? What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Is this really happening? Yeah. And then fast forward uh, 14 years or what, seven, eight years later, I'm playing with you guys for a, a couple months in Europe. And that was a yeah, lot we got, let's talk about that. That, that was really uh, such a crazy time is the end of the recording of Dante. And mm -hmm. uh, Igor decided that he did not want to go on tour. Yeah. So at the very last minute, we called you up. Thank God you were free. Um, yeah, I was free. I had, I had nothing. I, honestly, I was I wasn't doing anything. And the wow. fact when you guys called me, it was the perfect time because I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do because I didn't I wasn't playing with anyone. And I was like, I gotta fucking do something, man. And I'm like, when I go, when am I gonna get some? When am I gonna get a band? When am I gonna get a call? And then and I get a call from you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was so perfect, man. Yeah. I couldn't believe you know like everything worked out so well. You came down to Brazil. We went over the set list. Uh, yeah. We got to hang out in Brazil, which was was wild. Man. Yeah, that was, the first, I the most, that was the longest I think I've ever spent in Brazil, like just casually, without having to pick up and move to another gig. Because every other time I've been there, it's like get in, play, move, get in, play, move. Like we were, I was there for what, like a week and a half. Yeah, about a week and a half. It was great. It was the best time ever. You know, I really got to see São Paulo and met all your friends and saw all these cool places, ate a lot of amazing food and it was great. It was a good time. You even, you even gave some blood in the studio, man. <laughs> oh yeah. You were so it. radically into it. You smashed your head on the snare, on the rim of the snare from <laughs> head banging so hard. Right here, man. <laughs> yeah. And then I get this little trickle. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> so it's, that was so funny, man. That was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So then the whole preparation of this, you coming down to Brazil and 
being free to do a whole tour with In Flames. And I and for me, I was sitting there and I was like, I, I never heard of In Flames. I was completely like an idiot. I didn't realize that they had like many albums before uh, that tour. And they were like, you know, really high in their career at that yeah. point. Yeah. That was a Did you know tour. who they were? Yeah. Um, when I was with, um, with Soulfly, we played a bunch of shows with them. Um, opening up for Slayer, we did that white 2 k tour, and that's when I first met In Flames. That was in like 2002. So they've been around for a while. They've been around since like I think I would say like the mid to late 90s. Right. Yeah, right. they've been around for a long time. So yeah, by the yeah. time we play with them, they're already like they were really on on top, on fire. I had no idea. I, I had to go to the internet. I was like really late. You know, with getting a computer and everything when that whole came about, and then went there. It's like oh, in flames. I like their record live. I always found them even more more powerful. I, I liked them. I always like bands better live. Live, it's just I don't know, man. Yeah, anything goes. Anything can happen. It's a little faster. There's more. Yeah, energy. I'm always a fan of the live show more. Absolutely. I mean, that did it for me. I mean, hearing it on. Uh, you know, streaming it and hearing it, I was just like, okay, I, I got to see this live. And uh, so that tour was one of my favorite tours with you. I mean, it was so much fun. And uh, we really clicked very well with the Flames. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I remember we had like these tournaments, like football tournaments at the oh, end yeah. of the show. That's right. <laughs> uh, playing like, uh, what was it? Uh, a video game, like, Football games. FIFA. And we were FIFA, that's right. FIFA and we were so so into it. And everybody had their designated countries. Uh -huh. But it would be like we'd play the show and they would be down and be like, okay, everybody, who's up next? Who's getting in the pool? Like what's going on? Like we had a tournament. They were getting they were getting nasty, man. I remember. <laughs> yeah. It was really, really awesome. And uh and yeah, and they also were a lot of times just being naked on our bus. And uh, yeah, forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I kind of want to, don't want to think about that. Yeah, how, sweet. Yeah, who was doing that? Who was Daniel? Doing was Daniel? The was drummer. He, yes. Just you know, walk on. We're like, get the hell out of here. What are you doing? I was like, Daniel, if you're going to do that, at least put a towel down on that, you know, that area. You know? And Peter's tech, fucking Biffin. <laughs> Biffin. Yes. I miss that dude. I miss all those guys. Those guys are great. Up I, I know well. Oh, here we go. We have some questions here. What's this? Since we are doing a Q and A, huge opportunity for us to talk to you guys. The Brazilian culture influenced you. I'm sure it happened musically, but how about your life and habits? Cheers, guys. Is that a question to me or to you? Eduardo Rech. I don't know. I think it's for both. Okay. You go first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Eduardo? Yai, mano. Um, Yes, Brazilian culture really had a huge impact on me. I had to learn falling Portuguese. It's a muito difícil por muito tempo no falling Portuguese. My, I had to learn, and uh, I'm still learning. It's a very difficult language. Um, everything influenced me from living there for almost 20 years. Um, it's something that's unforgettable. It's become a second home uh, for me. You know, I if I'm away from Brazil, I I miss it. And uh, and I always have and always will have a big love for everything about Brazil. How about you, Mayorga? For me, I mean, to start off with, I mean, the music. I, I love everything about Brazilian music, whether it's where it's metal music or it's traditional Brazilian music, you know, like Sergio Mendes and or the North Brazilian music that inspired me to play what I played on the Soulfly album, which was from uh, Chico Science and Sounds of B, all that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, My favorite Maraca two drumming. Like I still to this day, I still play those Maraca two beats. I mean, that's a huge, yeah, made a huge impact and in, in, in you know influence on my style. And it, I, I still, it's still in there to this day when I play. It, it will never leave. So, yeah, Maraca two is something incredible to me. It hit me like such a wave. I, I never heard anything like that. I, I, I never really never really heard it myself. I mean, it's always been in the background. I mean, li living in New York City, I heard so many different kinds of music, you know, from, you know, salsa to merengue. And, I, and it's, of course, some Brazilian music like that my 
mother or my father would listen to, and usually it would be like Sergio Mendez would be playing in the background, but never really heard like Northern Brazil, you know, right. like Maraca too, until Max showed me the band Chico Science. And he basically said, listen to this and try to see what you get from that. And then let's jam. And then mm-hmm. the first Soulfly album came out just like that. So basically just try to meld a groove, metal groove with the Maraca too vibe. You know, I love that. Right. It's, it's the, it's probably one of the coolest rhythms, you know, I've ever like just, you know, got to discover, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Oh, along with, yes, sir. along with a lot of Moroccan music I like as well. I like a lot of like Northern African music, you know, rhythm wise. So it kind of, Think of all those yeah, things. Yeah, it, it has those elements for sure yeah. in it. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of odd That's type good. features, a lot of seven, a lot of six, eight, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's this? Let's see. Yeah. Andre, yeah. It says Andre's Kisser. Chaos yeah. BC was an amazing remix that What's we up, used dude? as an intro for the Chaos CD tour. Rory did that. Shit. I did do that. And I was so, hey, man. That that to me was a huge honor when when I found out that you guys were using my remix as an intro to Refuse Resist. I was really blown away. I never got to see you guys do it live in front of me, but uh, I mean, I remember seeing clips of it. You know, people would show me the videos like, "Yo, they're using your intro." I'm like, "Oh my god, this is huge!" You know, this is before Soulfly any of that stuff. We were just you know acquaintances and friends and. And at that time, I was really into, um, you know, what you see behind me, like synthesizers and all that shit. I love all that stuff. I just bought this new sampler at the time. It was an Akai S1000, and I was testing it out because I originally I was using this 8-bit sampler down here called the Mirage. It's They don't sound that great, but they sound, you know, if you want to crush and fuck up the, the sound a bit. But with the Akai S1000 at that time was like one of the cleanest samplers, and you could sample like – 50 to 30 seconds, which is huge, which was a lot of time back then, which is now it's like, pfft, you can sample an hour if you want. But anyway, I, I took the, the opening drum intro to uh, Refuse Resist and I sampled it and I kept looping it. I go, wow, this sounds great. And then late, next thing I know, I started you know hooking up the sequencers to it and I started writing other things over it. I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. So then I, t- I contact Monty Connor, who was there, the a and guy, I played him the demo of what everyone hears now is the Chaos PC remix, well, half of it, because I didn't have all of it yet. I only had, like, you know, two parts worth. And he heard it. He's like, wow, this is really interesting. It's really cool. This is at the time when a lot of bands were doing, like, remixes, meaning, like, right. versions of a current song that they had out. Or like, like a pretty It'd be cool. very cool, man. It's so awesome. So it, he, I guess he played it for the guys and and played it for Max, played it for Andreas and everyone. And he's they're like, well, you know, these guys want you to fully go for it and do it. So then I had access to the actual two inch reels. Oh, nice! From, from a Chaos uh, AD album, and I took him to a studio, and instead of sampling straight off the record, I sampled like actual instruments like real drums real guitars real bass real vocals everything like separated and then i could really like take the song apart and put it back together again how i want without having to you know deal with an already made mix so it was cool it was a great experience that they gave me for that so thanks guys awesome awesome question mr kisser yeah He's probably, he's probably, i already know the fucking answer dude shut the fuck up <laughs> I know what you did. <laughs> and so now, wh- what's going on with you now? You're in Hell Yeah. Is this true? Yeah, for right now. But, I mean, obviously the band's not happening right now. No band, nobody's band is happening right now. So I think they're on a hiatus, or they're going to be on a hiatus for a while. Right, right. And so what have you been doing since you've been on this entire quarantine lockdown. I mean, what do you, what's been going on? Um, right now I've just been doing some, uh, some work with ministry, been recording some, some drums for, for, uh, potential songs that he's working awesome. on. They just released a, a song just before called alert that I played drums on. I've been working with Al like on and off for the past year, but now since everyone's been home, I've been like, you know, 
we've been going back and forth and just been playing on his stuff and nice. uh, doing some small soundtrack work you know stuff i can't really talk about too much right now but i got a, i got some things on the on the burner right now that i'm working on so you're just staying really 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 busy yeah and homeschooling oh yes but that's not happening yeah she's done with homeschooling my little girls my, my little girl's definitely stoked about that she's like are we done yet are we done yet <laughs> <laughs> This is and how old is she now? She hasn't been around kids in three months. No kids have been around each other in three months. And now it's now that you know things are a little bit calmer, you know, kids are able to hang out a bit, you know, it's social distancing with some masks. Like right now, my little girl's at camp at YMCA, you know, for a few hours a day in a class of like 10 kids and one leader per class. Everyone's masked up, everyone is constantly washing hands, and it's been good, you know. So right, right. And I feel good about it. And you know, she needs to be around kids, you know? She's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Adults are boring. God. Yeah. What wants to be talking about? Wait, what's to be around some old adults? What's this? Dan. Roy, was what's it? Up, Dan? What's up, dude? How you doing? First off, uh, Roy, was it difficult learning playing Maracatu with Jackson Bandera? Um, at first... I gotta be honest, no, really, because I've always, I mean, I used to play in a, it's not marching band, but I used to play in, in orchestral band. And I used to do a lot of like, you know, rudiment, you know, rudimental, you know, drumming in that, in that sense, you know, a lot of marching stuff and stuff like that. So when I listened to it at first, um, it threw me off a bit, but I had to watch to really see where the drummer's hands were going. So then that's what made sense to me. And then I just made my own version of it. You know, because I'm not playing it exactly perfectly. I don't think anyone does. Unless you live and breathe that, then you'll do it. You'll do it perfectly. But for me, I do what sounds best to my ear, and I just try to play it the best I can. But I love it. Yeah. You know? And I loved, you know, connecting with Jackson. He was great. He's a great player. Um, oh, great, yeah. Like, sick player, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That band was amazing. I still listen to to that 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 was it Afro Cibadelia. Yeah, that's the name of that record. It has a Tommy uh, Tomiko Maracatu. Maracatu e Tomiko. The mama we I we that really threw me off was that one. It's like how the hell is he doing it so fast like that? And then I watched. I found a live video and I could see how he was doing it. I'm like ah, oh. so it's a lot of you know. Oh. I'm like, okay, there it is. You still got it. You still got it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite rhythms, without a doubt. Now it's on my playlist. Honestly, I hear it like probably every other day, like something from that album, and a lot of remixes. They have great remixes for that have been done. There's so many remixes for that song, but that whole record, <laughs> that whole record to me, I can only listen to it top to bottom. I can't start in the middle. Right, right, right. You know, <laughs> first song, it's just like <laughs> gates open. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, another and one thing I was also uh, since I've been on the web a lot more than often, I'm up on a lot of stuff more so than ever, and also lost because it's so chaotic. Yeah. Um, it was uh, like two years since the passing of Vinnie Paul. Yeah, and uh, you know it's. It brought back a lot of memories, you know. It's just like, how was that for you? I mean, was it a shock? Like, how did you find out, and where were you? Because yeah, it was a huge shock. Actually, I was on I was on tour with Stone Sour. I think we're somewhere in the middle of Europe. I think we're in like Switzerland, something like that. And then I got the call, got the text mm -hmm. from Chad, and yeah, that was fuck, man. I remember it big time. Everybody was pretty shocked and sad and, you know, still, yeah, am. Yeah. I think about it every now and then, especially, you know, you know, being in his band playing. Right. I mean, it's a huge trip for me. It's like, there'll be times where I'm just completely shut off and I'm playing, but there'll be times in the middle of the show where I'm like, I can't fucking believe this is a reality. Like he's not here. Right. I'm here. This is like you can never, you never imagined that ever. No, no, yeah. no. 
Not at all. I, I expect to see him just come walking around the corner like, hey, my Oregon! <laughs> you know, he always my last name. He never, never called me, never called me Roy, and he always shout my last name at the top of his lungs. It was the fucking coolest thing. I fucking miss, I miss that dude. He I definitely. Love. He's the funniest. The best interest. He was hilarious. He was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> but the, but the, laugh, the laugh that he had, it was so contagious. It's like it's like a big roaring gut laugh. It's fucking amazing. His <laughs> laugh, and. I mean, the shit he says, and he's so cool and poised about everything when he says something. It's just, he's, he's right. just a cool dude, man. He definitely was. I mean, he always had so much respect, you know, for the band and, and every time coming to our shows and really supporting us and always so generous and very uh, thoughtful, you know, and just a really big heart, you know. I always <laughs> felt that from him. To everyone, always loving and supporting and generous to everybody, to bands. I mean, he would... When all the times we've toured with them before, you know, when I was in when I was with Stone Sour, he would always be setting up a barbecue outside of their bus and cook for everyone, like make these like jalapeno poppers and right. all kinds of food. Like this guy was fuck, man. You'd spend thousands of dollars and just feed everybody. Yeah, right, right. And of course, you know, we oh, would super generous. help him clean everything up and you know, do it every day like that. He's great, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Leandro Alves Piera. Hi, guys. How are you? My daughter is a big fan of the band. Please send a kiss from her in Portuguese, Brazil. Her name is Ana Beatriz. We living in Jundai City. Wow, Leandro, thank you for the message and, uh, and, and, and writing in English. I know it can't be easy because um, I cannot write in Portuguese. <laughs> but uh, definitely... Oi, Ana Beatriz, Yai. Hello. Where's John? Where's John Dia? Where's John 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 Dai? How you say that? Where's John Dai? John Dai. John Dai. Where is that? How do you pronounce it, Bruno? How, how do you pronounce the name of that city? <laughs> you say Jun Dai. Jun Dai. Yeah, Jun Dai. Jun Dai. Where is that? Where is that? It's it's close to São Paulo. Oh, cool! So it's like a like a like a suburb, a little small city outside. Yeah, it's a small city, like country town. Nice. Interior. Interior. Simple to your community. What's up from Europe? Uh oh, we got euros. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Question for Roy: When did you hear Simple to for the first time? Which album is your favorite? And did you hear Quadra already? Thank you. Take care. Going. Yes, I heard Quadra and it's fucking awesome. Great job, by the way, Derek. All you guys. Sounds great. Um, Sepultura for the first time. My favorite album then. Um, God. Quadra, of course, right? <laughs> um, but after that. Mean, God damn it. Come on. I mean, neither, of us were, neither of us were even a thought in that certain. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm crazy. sorry. Um, Continue. Mm, I'd have to say, well, the first record I ever heard by them was Beneath the Remains, but the album that really got me like, holy shit and wow, and was probably a rise. Yes. And actually, that's when I, actually, that's when I first met all of them. A mutual oh, really? On that tour? On that tour at the Ritz wow. in New York City. Um, me and uh, me and uh, John John from Nausea went to the show because we were friends with Napalm. Nice. Napalm played this. And uh, it was Napalm, Sacred Reich, Supple oh, so it was a, New Kid, Titans the, New Titans on the Block, yeah. So they introduced, the block. So they introduced you know, us to... Uh, to Max and Andreas things. I remember I heard Max was like, you know, he's into punk and he's like, he, he actually knew our, wow. my band at the time. He knew Nausea and he liked Nausea and he wanted to meet me as well. So we met each other and yeah, it was pretty cool. We hung out and talked bullshit about punk rock and all that stuff. Yeah. That's cool, sure. man. I, I didn't even, I mean, I remember that tour because I was at a show across the street from that tour in Cleveland, Ohio. Where was that? That was in Cleveland, and I was in that 
tour was happening and I went to go see Quicksand, actually. <laughs> I was like, oh, what am I going to see here? Uh. And then later on, I, I discovered Arise, which is weird, you know, like, but it was a friend like, yo, check this out. He gave me like a cassette tape. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, yo, check this out. This is crazy dudes from Brazil. And guess what the name of the friend was who gave me that tape? Who? What? His name was Max. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. He was yeah. like one of my best That's friends. Cool. That's pretty amazing. So it's, it's pretty funny, man. It's just That's like, really right. yeah, for me, that's that was like really the album that uh, I started to feel their, the identity of the band much more. Same. Like they were, they were growing so much. And they started to be to form their own identity, and uh, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, just the the whole artwork and everything is in my head, you know, and it brings back a lot of memories. And uh, and it was super original. And I wasn't really into uh, metal that much, but they really drew me back, you know, much more into metal. They got me much more interested, especially lyrically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. 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 It's this. Alexandro Aguilar, since Derek also came from the hardcore scene, I would like to ask you, Roy, about your period with the legendary Amoebics. Is there any possibility of a comeback? Cheers. Um, Thank you. Um, unfortunately, hi, hi, Alexander, how you doing? Unfortunately, I don't think that is gonna happen anytime soon. What? Um, <laughs> it's just not what? what? No! No! <laughs> um, but um, my experience with them was fucking great, man. With Rob and his brother Stig, it was pretty awesome. And how that got together, um, a mutual friend of mine and Rob's, uh, Alicia from the band 13, I don't know if anyone remembers them from, from uh, East Village, New York. They're a slow doom metal band, all girls, and they were fucking amazing, side note. Um, but Alicia put me and Rob together because Rob was looking for a drummer at the time to just film video of what the band would be like now because they were doing some sort of like documentary on Amoebics. So Amoebics really wasn't going to get back together as a band anyway, but uh, so basically that was my role in it. So when we played together, he had the idea like, we should keep con continue to do this. So then we did. So then we, we uh, set up shop in, in some uh, small town in Northern Ireland called Antrim, which is close to Bally Castle. And we spent like wow. a month there and recorded that record or some of it that everyone has now called, or everyone knows now called Sonic, Sonic Mass. And um, we played some shows in Europe and England. And we did like a, a small tour, like a seven, eight day tour in, in America. And that was about it. And it was pretty awesome, man. It was a great time. It's unfortunately, you know, won't be able to really do it again, but you know. Powers of B. Oh, man. But thanks, All right. Jesse. What's up, Jesse? Jesse Kippel. We, we know each other. Thanks for doing Simple Quadra. Good stuff. Looking forward to the Quadra World Tour. We're looking forward to too, Jesse. I think Keep everyone's looking forward to get out to fucking play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me about it. You know, yeah, it's, every, every muso out there, man. Everyone's everyone's chomping at the bit, wanting to play. You know, it's uh, yeah. I mean, and it's the last thing I'm I'm hearing about our, our concerts. You know, it's nobody's like talking about this in media or anything as much as I would like them to. You know, it's like I haven't heard any good plans for anything soon, which is unfortunate. I, I'm. I'm worried, to say the least. Well, when we'll we'll be able to play as soon as Mother Nature says it's okay, you know. Right. So right. That's it. It's all up to her. And have you been staying healthy? You know, like what have you been eating? Have you been have you been cooking home a lot? Have you been ordering? Like we started ordering actually about the last month, but before that, I'd only been cooking. That's it. Only right. Been in house, you know, just a lot of, a lot of vegetables and less, you know, meat. I've been actually more on a vegetarian diet, but still, I'm eating a little bit of nice. fish in there. You know what I mean? Right. That's about it. You think it's important to have a strong immunity during, like, 
these crazy times? Do you think that, I mean, cause I haven't heard that much talked about in the media, you know, so much as from our own government or anything talking about how important it is to have a strong immunity. I think that's logical common sense with anyone who wants to survive and, 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 and be healthy is to that's, just- that's like, Logical <laughs> common sense is actually something that's very hard to come by. It's well, <laughs> In my mind, I, if I if I feel healthy, and I'm trying to the system. I, I have an idea what to do to make that happen. To stay on top of the supplements and eat the hell out of them vegetables and eat all them fruits, man. That's the only thing that's going to keep you sustainable through any of that. Right. I mean, don't smoke. I mean, I, I, Thank God I, I don't. I've seen some different messages, you know, like especially now that I'm like watching more series and TV stuff. Unfortunately, I get stuck with those commercials. Yeah, you know, they're just like boosting the worst things you can possibly imagine for you. You know, it's just like a lot of like alcohol, a lot of like fatty foods, a lot of like just trash. I well, cut all the fat, fatty, really bad fatty foods out and, and kept the good ones in. Like you know, for instance, avocado is good fats. You know, like I'll eat that stuff. Uh, the drinking, yeah, I have one or two every other night. I'm a cocktail. Well, it's like I have like my my drink of choice because it's 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 clean. Is I have a vodka vodka water and and a and a and a lemon on ice. That's it. You know, right. maybe one or and two, I, and then I'm good. You know, at the end of the night, yeah, a balance, a balance, and then just keep up on taking zinc every day, man. Zinc and vitamin C, man. Those are those are those are really important to keep your immunity up for sure. Right on. Yeah. Look who's here. Who's here? Silvio. Silvio. Silvio, <laughs> Silvio <laughs> Gorman. <laughs> yes, I'm very, You're very different too, Silvio, these days. God damn it. <laughs> you're different, Roy. Wow. <laughs> Fabricio Grillette. Fabricio, what's up, man? Yes. Roy, is a question for you. What kind of musical background you have before you've joined a band? Are you self-taught? <laughs> is that what he sounds like? Yeah, I'm imagining this is how Fabricio is sounding like. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So are you self taught, Roy? <laughs> yeah, I am self <laughs> I'm self taught. Oh my God, dude, you got all jewels and shit on me. <laughs> right. okay. um, yeah, I'm self taught um, pretty much from. Uh, from the first day, and I mean, I had I had some lessons oh, yeah. here and there. Maybe I didn't know that for a couple of weeks here and there, but not really, you know, because at the time, you know, in the seventies when I really started to, you know, I got into playing drums. I've been playing since I was like five now. What I had in front of me was bands like ACDC and Kiss and you know Thin yeah. Lizzy and you know hard rock, you know, shit like that, Rush, and yes. at the time. I wanted to learn that style, but I, I didn't want to sit down. I didn't want to, I wasn't really into jazz or anything like that or playing traditional grip. I wanted to do, you know, matched, you know? So the teachers that I, I were going to were all, were all jazz cats and they're, they're phenomenal. But I'm thinking, I can't play that. I want to play this. So I would bring in records. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, no, learn this. And then I started learning my rudiments and you know, it's, it's great. And I, and I, I walked away knowing rudiments because of that. And then found other teachers that were willing to teach me how to play, you know, you know, just groove, you know, keep the keep the pocket down, you know. And then I was just after a while, I was kind of like, you know, I'll learn it on my own, and just kind of went from there and just watched and learned and listened, and I still I'm still learning. I watch stuff yeah. on YouTube every day, learning stuff. Right. I watch Eloy every day on Instagram, and I'll be like, I want to try that. And I'll run in the room. I can't do that. I'm gonna try it. You know? He's got the meanest left hand I've ever seen on any fucking drummer. God damn it, you you're fucking badass. Straight up, kid. How's a grungy? Jesus. Christ. Yeah, I mean, watching him, like these days, like watching drummers like him, it's really inspiring. Him, like yeah, I, I, Mario De Plunti from from Gojira, really inspiring. Gojira. Yeah. Oh, there's so many amazing artists that are out there now that are definitely inspirational. You know, I, it, it's fascinating, you know, but it, you really, I, I learned so much from 
so many different people as well, you know, from watching them, admiring them, seeing them play live, especially, is where it really kicks in, you know, yeah, yeah. that's. But back to the, the, the self-taught lessons thing, I don't, I don't, you know, condone anyone that wants to do that and go to school you know, for music and stuff like that. If I had known more about that as a kid, I probably would have done that maybe. But I also wasn't into just sitting down and being taught like I was being taught at school. I just wanted right. to in there and just play. So that's why I, I kind of chose the route of being, you know, teaching myself. And right on. just kind of, you know, be able to express on my own. Make any sense. Oh, it makes total sense. <laughs> Here's the next question. All right. Hey, Bruno, what's up, man? Another singer. Excellent. Hello, guys. Cheers from Bella Horizonte. DIY. How was your experience playing with Sepultura and what you think about their last two albums? Roy. Talking. Yeah, talking to you, man. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Bias, I, I, I love but, I'm sorry. By the way, Bruno is an eminent. It's a Brazilian band. He's a singer. They're a great band. We've done a lot of shows with them. I think the last That's three well. albums for you guys that you, you, in the last three records you've definitely found your voice now, all of you, I think, especially in the last record. I'll say that it's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's, awesome. it's nice to see the the evolution. You know what I mean? Thank you, man. It's yeah. I mean I I think for any artist I, it's such a, a joy to have that evolution. You know, it's something that you crave as an artist is to evolve, you know, mm -hmm. to really not repeat and do the same thing, you know, not be trapped in some type of box or anything, you know, but to really like move in a direction that's awesome to hear. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. You know, just, you know, always keep your horizons open, you know, just don't ever, never hold back, man. Always give, you know what I mean? That's what I've always been Hell told, yeah. you know. There was somebody from Transylvania. Uh-oh, here he is, uh -oh. the voice of Bruno. <laughs> let's just like we're gonna give a quick message for our simple family about like the merchandise and stuff you guys can like have some water or something right now like people are really enjoying <laughs> and people are really enjoying like our, our our chat here so i'm gonna share with you our web page, Sepul Quarta. So you just visit sepultura.com.br slash Sepul Quarta. And then you're going to be able to find all the links. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Well, well, He's really having like a live sound soundtrack. Right <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we have all the links, you know. Stop. It's on infinite repeat. Sorry. Oh my God. I'm hearing things. I had to add some some ambience to that. Um, you know. Can help. Oh my God, I felt like there's yeah, a live soundtrack for our... <laughs> <laughs> over here. See? Watch. Oh my God. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sepul Quattro. <laughs> So you, you can just go there and have like all the videos that we're doing right now, you know, the live Q&A here. And after that, we're going to have Desperate Cry, Killer okay. Version with Jason Bitter and Philip Roa from ooh, over ooh. Shadows Fall. And after that, we have like the storyteller with Jean de la Bella talking about Kairos, no, it's Kairos anniversary. And here you have like all the links, you know, to our web stores, you know, in Europe, USA, Brazil, and Australia. And pretty soon we're gonna share with you some 
new classic merchandising that we're preparing for all of you. So all that's right. Just go to sepultura.com.br slash sepulpart to follow all the links to our official merchandising store. And let's go back to the live Q&A. Yeah. Sorry for hijacking your commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, no, that was that was actually kind of interesting. That was very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, man. I saw somebody from Transylvania. Hello, Transylvania. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Okay. Bruno, can you send some? Hello, yeah. Right. Brana, Istvan. I'm just just butchering people's names on this. Istvan Kosar. Kos Kos Kosar. Hello. Transylvania. Have you ever played Transylvania? Uh oh. Roy, is there we go. No, it's not over. It's just not wow. yes. Phew. I never seen you guys play live. You know that, right? I'm waiting for my, my what? tickets. What? <laughs> never seen you live in the flesh playing with Stone Sour. Really? Maybe, I think maybe we played a festival or something and we're like leaving or something, but I don't recall. That's possible. Wow. Yeah. Whatever, dude. I'm, de I'm definitely hitting you up, though. Like Whatever, dude. <laughs> Guest list plus one, please. Of course. I think the last like, time I've seen you, like a laminate. I think oh. the last time I haven't seen you guys play as this lineup was at the whiskey like six, wow. six years ago. Dude, Maybe on, when Elo first joined the band. Yeah, that was a long time ago, man. Like seriously, you just joined the band like months before. Yeah. Oh, here's a question for you, Roy. Haru Raul. Barbosa, E I E Mano Mano He's laughing. Roy, could you tell us about your experience playing with Ministry? Um, great. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just, um, joking. just joking. That was awesome. Um, again, that was a that was another surprise uh, phone call. I got you know from. Uh, from Al and how I got that was how I got to meet Al and getting involved with that was actually through my wife. Cause my wife uh, was doing uh, his, his, uh, his girlfriend's hair at the time. Well, actually his girlfriend's hair now and his hair. <laughs> and uh, I, guess they, right. I guess he knew that I played drums and knew what I was doing. Or what I did and was available, and he asked, you know, wouldn't I be into playing? And that's how that happened. And then we all crammed in this little room that you see behind me, all five of us, and jammed in here for a week. And then I went on the road with him. It's crazy. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome, man. I, I love playing with him and, and uh, JB and Caesar and and uh, and uh, Sin. Jason at the time was playing bass. It was great, man. It was a great time. And I got to, you know, play uh, on the last record on the Americans record. And I'm currently oh, nice. doing new stuff with them. Yeah. So you were a big fan before, right? Oh yeah. Like huge fan. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've loved every version, you know, from when they had with sympathy to Twitch to land and rape and honey. And it just saw the evolution of, how they went, you know, they went from more synth pop to yeah, that, really that's true, total industrial to metal industrial. They, they pretty much were the creators of that metal industrial sound. You're absolutely right, man. And I remember that switch. Yeah, like I was even like working in clubs at that time, like dance clubs, and I was like, "This is Ministry." When they had that Slayer, you know, riff. How about you know, themes? Going, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh, Eduardo Rick. There it is. Weird sound intro for the next guy, Sec 12. Yeah, well, hey, you got a guy. And yeah, he's got the stash too, Eduardo. Looking good, my man. Looking good. The Danny Glover, I call it. Mine's hanging a little bit lower, though, as they say. <laughs> oh. <Tell yourself> that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
Oh, this is a good question. What was your favorite Sepultura song when you were on tour with them? I don't see that. What was your favorite song to play? It's on the side. I saw it somewhere. My favorite song to play? Yes. Fuck, man. That was from Dan. There he is. Back again, Dan. What was my favorite song? Probably a ride. Yeah. We played the whole thing front to back. You know? well, that's right, because before we were doing like a medley or something, you know, like, and you're like, now we got to play it out. Well, for me, it was, it was, it was for, as a, for the drummer, for drums. For me, it was fun to play because, I mean, hearing bass and guitar, it was like hearing Paulo and Andreas play. It was like playing with a record, you know, it's like right. playing to the sound, you know, it was, it was, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And, it's a weird feeling playing with those guys, man. What's that? <laughs> like it's a weird feeling that I always have playing, you know, when I first got into the room, playing with those guys, you know. Well, this is what I noticed. Oh, this is what I remember and what I noticed about when I played with 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 uh, Paul Andreas. Andreas tends to push a little bit, and Paul tends to pull back a little bit. So it's a really cool, you know, groove going on right there it's great and then we all kind of meet in the middle you know? right it's pretty so, cool i mean i remember the first time stepping into the practice space and just being like holy shit this is really happening <laughs> 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 yeah. i was like this sounds like you know the albums like everything i imagine but yeah. so much yeah. more it was it, it's it, a trip, it, it, you know? i mean and andreas definitely has a sound man like on his guitar right. he any guitar and he'll sound like him i've always always been a big fan of his guitar sound his playing and how he is on stage he just looks great sounds great you know awesome right on so our rise right yeah that was the song i have to say that well there's another one too there's another the one. i should i should have brought out the set list there's man. another one that i really liked uh, playing that we had on tour with you It'd be great to go through it because I can't remember. Here's that. some crazy talk. <laughs> I can't remember that right now. Uh, embryonic cells. That's it. Yeah. Those, are two, <laughs> those two I really loved playing. Yeah. Even now, A lot I, mean, of fun. I still mess around. Like when I'm on drums, just hear. Just check him, you know, warming up. I'll I'll still play th songs I used to play with other bands. I I'll play those. I'll right. play Soulfly songs that I used to love playing. Like I'll play Eye for an Eye and No Hope No Fear all the time. I love mm -hmm. checking with those because you can they're slow enough and you can really hear the drum, hear the room, and, and uh, you know just hear the ambience. And or I'll play some Zeppelin, you know, or or just you know, do my version of Moby Dick drum solo. I'll do stuff like that, you know. Or nice. Or you know, Welcome Home, you know, Grandma. <laughs> that drum intro that Mickey D does. That oh. Fucking, <laughs> I just got that record again, that, that uh, the, the Them album. It's fucking great, man. I haven't heard that album, like, front to back in years. It's great. I, I think now going... I have so much time to go through albums. There's so many classics. I'm like, oh man, incredible. Oh, check it out. Your boy and my she's being cool. Follow she's I have to hold you back down, my job. What? <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. Paulo is likes to speak in riddles in the rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> you do a great I mean, job, Paulo. What are you talking about? I wasn't throwing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we did it. I mean, we. We're reminded of you almost every show night when we go backstage. We're like, oh my God, you did not do a Roy. Yes. What? Every what night. You, what? What did I do? If somebody, if somebody sits on a chair completely sweaty and leaves like a huge stain there, we're like, that, from different spots in the dressing room, they're like, oh, you're doing a Roy. Can I you're be doing honest? a Roy? I still do yeah. that. I still, and I still get to the mom band. Yeah. For God damn it, Roy. <laughs> Keep these away from me. You <laughs> yeah. remember, I spill everywhere I go, right? You remember oh that. Oh, my God, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's a true Roy. You spill. As soon as you walk that in. That is a true Roy. That is, yeah. That's so true. Rings and spilling drinks. That's what I do. Oh, here we go. Slavic. Hello, Roy. 
How was your experience doing the Roadrunner United, the All-Star Session? What is like working with fellow musicians under the Roadrunner record label? That Flop. was probably one of the most, one of the best experiences in my life. Um, that was, I can't believe that was 15 years ago, first off. Um, that was at the Nokia Theater, uh, that show that we did. Um, that, was, that was intense, man. Like, I just couldn't believe how that show ran so perfectly on time with all those musicians. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. the coordinators, the the stage the stage managers. I mean, they had it down. We had two drum kits there, and we had doubles of every bit of amplification you could possibly have. You know, have like two bass amps, two four guitar amps. So anyone could just walk up there if they wanted and play it and plug in. You know what I mean? But there was a you know there was a it was it was all you know methodically regimented. Every everybody had you know a bunch, bunch of songs to play. People knew their parts. Um, it was a lot of fun, man. You know, I got to play with other musicians and I never, you know, would, would imagine playing with. I got to play with Jeff Waters from Annihilator and did a couple of Annihilator, did an Annihilator song and King Diamond song and Tim Ripper Owens was singing both of them. It was amazing. Uh, and, yeah. I mean, playing with uh, Paul Gray, you know, from Slipknot, you know, rest in peace. Play with Andre. Andre is Kisser from Simple Tour. I'm getting to that. Hold on. Um, <laughs> Played with Andreas and and and, uh, and Scott Ian, that was amazing, you know. And Phil Demel, and I think that she from playing that show is what gave Andreas the idea to uh, to get me involved with you guys for those few months. You are correct. I think that's what it sounds was. Like, I think so too. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. I wasn't invited to go. So next question. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, I didn't want to go there anyway. Monty Connor calling mm. out names. Oh shit! <laughs> no, it's all good, Monty. I'm sure he's not watching, but anyway, Albert, Mes <laughs> Mesquita, Albert Mesquita. Am I saying that right? Mes Mes Mesquita, yeah. Okay, Roy. Remember Otis Otis in 2006 on <laughs> the Dante Twenty One tour. <laughs> what do you think here that day? First off, why is every accent you make, whether it's from Eastern Bloc Europe to wherever he's from, like South America or Mexico, you have to sound like that. <laughs> I, I, I want to mix it up. I mean, I don't know. I hope people don't get offended, but I do voices. No, no. And, uh, no. I don't really care. I, I like to do voices. But uh, okay, the so question I... What was that question? He just disappeared. Oh, there, oh, thank, there it is. Thank you. All right. Do you You're remember all the doors? What do you think of it that day? That tour for me was um, it was a great it was great like it was a great experience like I was like I was talking about it earlier you know like I, at the time I I wasn't even a thought about being in Stone Sour just yet I, I, I wasn't in any band I haven't been on I hadn't been on tour for you know a number of years at that point and it was a great experience and the guys took me in as a brother and it was awesome and you know you guys were great to be on the road with. I think he's asking about the Brazilian TV show that you guys did oh, here. I didn't even see that. <laughs> Alta yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I do. Artists. That show, you guys pretty much threw me into the fucking lions. That yeah, time. that was awesome, right? You weren't expecting other. That was the first ever performance with the guys. And yeah, I was nervous as fuck. It was going to be on live television, so anything can happen. Um, that, was a, that was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. Um, even getting to be able to play with the other two drummers in the show as well. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. hard for me to do that because I remember I couldn't hear them. They were so far yeah. away from me. Like, what, what was the what was the woman's name that was playing drums? She was amazing. Cool. Vera. Vera. Vera something. But she was amazing. And there's the other guy with the glasses who was a great drummer too. Both sick. But I couldn't hear them at all to keep up, which was the worst thing. Yeah, I was so bummed out. They were like 40 feet away from me. I'm like, I can't hear them. So I'm just like squinting and just trying to play with them. It was probably, it was really embarrassing. But that. Yeah, TV is difficult at times. That whole that whole experience playing on Alta Auras was great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great show, man. You got to play on Alta Auras. That show has a lot of history in Brazil. Acid, Vera, yeah. 
There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Thank yeah. you, Paco. <laughs> yeah, he's incredible. Great drummer. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, Hobson Neto. What's up, Hobson? Roy, what's the best and the worst thing about playing full time and part time in a band? Cheers, foo foo, massa. <laughs> um, I would nothing, nothing, nothing bad about any of that. To be honest, you know, I, I play full time in Stone Sour. That's you know, and but but most of the time we take you know a couple years off because, as you know, Corey's in Slipknot. He'll go do Slipknot for two years, so it'll be two years on, two years off. Um, I don't mind because that frees me up to do any other do other things I want to do, like do some soundtrack work or do session work or play with other people or stay at home and be dad and, you know, raise my kid and spend time with my family and my, my you know, my wife and my daughter. So nothing wrong with that setup at all. It's the best. Awesome. awesome. Very lucky. Oh. Okay, I bet you can pronounce this one too, Roy. Rohan. Badvar. 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 Rohan Badvar. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. Derek. I never felt that something is missing in simple family because of you. Wish I could growl with you maybe someday. I'm from India and my family thinks I'm pagan. Who cares? <laughs> You guys are the modern musical Vlads, the Impalers. Well, whoa! I, I don't know. To, I, well, thank you. I, That's I think I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty hardcore, man. Have, have you ever been to India, bro? Right? Yeah, I've been wanting to go to India for so long. Man, fascinating, man. It, it was one of my places, you know, like places I had to visit. Um, and it was it blew my mind. I'd never been in like culture shock going to a certain place yeah. ever in my entire life. But stepping off the plane when we had done three shows there, that was I was shocked, literally shocked. That's amazing. By by everything, and and in a good way, you know, in a really really good way. It was just yeah. like mind blowing. You're very fortunate, and lucky man. Like I, I know so many people of. Within our circle, I've, I've been there, and I've, I've never been there. I'm longing to go there, like really bad. I'd love to. I'd love to perform there, but even not. I mean, I'd love to actually just have regular, just you know, quiet time there too. Would be nice vacation. Uh, and it's 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 deep. Oh, Fabricio, sure. I think we had Fabricio's uh, before. Roy Roy didn't join Sepultura when he had this time with the band. Wasn't it the main idea at the time? It's a good question. It's a very good question. I, I think it was open ended from how how I, how I took it. You know, I don't think I don't think I was really meant to stay there that long. I mean, it, everything happened the way it happened. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, but, I mean, I gotta say that we were we definitely you know wanted you to to be in the band at that time, and um and you got that call for uh for Stone Sour. You know, to be an actual, you know, like to be a member, writing member of the band, um, having your own thing, you know. Well, at that time, um, I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to be that, like, I was going to be the band. So when I got the call for Stone Sour, I was still practicing on my own before I came to visit you guys to play. And I recorded. Oh, uh, that's and right. That's and then right. when I came back, I went and recorded on the album. And then they. That's right wanted to make me, you know, part of the band. Right. So it was, yeah, it was, that's what it was fresh. You know, I, I just joined and yeah. Yeah. Damn it's, hard, you. It's, hard to, it's, hard to really, it's hard to really explain it because it, you just had to be there at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was definitely like timing, you know, but everything really works, worked out, you know, everything worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't think, I don't think I was meant to be there that long. I think I was only meant to be there for right. that amount of time. And, Look who you guys have now. You guys, you guys have Eloy, who's definitely brought you to a whole other level musically. You know, it was amazing. So. Right on, man. I love that time period, man. I love that time with you guys, and it was great. And yeah. I don't forget that. You know. Let's get some questions, Bruno. From Asar, are you still afraid of the Green Giant? What's the green Giant? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Silvio, so amusing. What does that mean? Am I, am I still afraid of it? No. Okay, Paul, we're laughing. Okay. RS, RS, RS. Is that how he laughs? Earth, Earth, Earth. Earth, Earth, Earth. Earth, Oh, my God. I, I wish you could see some of these comments on the side. I, I can't read them off because they're. I can't see any of it. Oh, no? I can, oh, I know. Oh, Jesus. No, yeah, so yeah. That's been happening. <laughs> Bruno, let's, let's get some. Some questions going. Who are your influences other than musicians? I, read, I just read quickly. It just disappeared that I'm no longer welcome for Thanksgiving. What the hell is that? <laughs> I know, I'm going to pull out the ones that are just like, uh, what color shoes are you wearing right now? Okay. Who are your influence, influences other than musicians? Hmm. Well, I like a lot of directors, a lot of film directors like Stanley Kubrick and uh, John Carpenter. Heard of uh, them. You heard of them? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really into I'm, I'm into effects, special effects, makeup artists like Tom Savini. I mean, I love that. I'm in, influenced by that. Um, mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I see Michael I'm, Myers behind you. Oh, yeah. I'm influenced by Michael Myers. <laughs> I don't want to kill anyone. Oh, we got a question for Roy. What? Give me Mo. Roy, any thoughts about ever bringing back our bloom? That was your band, like old school. Yeah, I was, I was, I was playing with them for, I don't know, a good three years. And then we just kind of stopped. How do you pronounce it? A bloom. A bloom. Yeah. If, any chance? Any um, thought? I don't. I don't think so. I think everyone's pretty much moved on at this point, you know? I mean, bringing back together any old band it is always difficult sometimes. Even try to bring back my old band, Nausea, has been difficult to do. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've actually gotten together a bunch of times, uh, a couple times, uh, me, Victor, and John John, and actually wrote some music together. But it's just hard to, to get your old singers back in line because you know they all have different lives everybody has different lives so it's yeah yeah it's hard to i get it organize something like that you know sometimes things are just better left alone where they where they stopped right here's one for you roy ghost face i thought it was like ghost face like wu-tang but no it's like <laughs> ghost face different type of ghost face roy i'm a 15 year old drummer does <laughs> the youtube covers i love this what feedback can you give up and coming drummers. What feedback can you give upcoming drummers? Hey, Ghostface, thank you, man. 15. Keep doing what you're doing. Just keep playing drums and, and, and just always expand your knowledge with playing drums. So always try new things, always learn. Just keep doing what you're doing. Believe in what you're doing, believe in yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. Antonio, Rodrigo, Higuera, Migri. Negri. Negri. Jesus, I can't even read Portuguese anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How are you dealing with these difficult times? Do you have a message for us? How are you dealing with these difficult times? Do you have a message for us? I do have a message. I'm dealing with it, man. I'm trying to stay positive as much as possible because it can be completely mind-wracking to be locked into one place for such a long time without family, without friends. And so I really try to stay positive mentally, try to keep my head in a good place from reading, from uh, watching really good documentaries. I really enjoy uh, speaking with people who are positive in my life, um, staying busy working with uh, Highway to Health, a TV show, um, cooking a lot at home, eating very well, staying physically fit. I think all these really something that uh help in dealing in these like lockdown times and having a routine and changing that every now and then but definitely having a routine and not just slipping into um a depression which can easily can happen but um you know it, it takes a lot of energy but that's what i've been doing you know yeah staying focused and communicating this definitely helps you know simple quadra is something i look forward to every wednesday and speaking with friends and seeing them and can you know collaborating with our 
the bandmates and playing and, and you know it's it's really important so yeah those are a few things what about you me Roy. well the first you know obviously the first i think month or a few weeks for everyone it was it was definitely a, a shock to the system and uh yeah trying to find that uh balance and that that uh what do you call it um just a routine you know yes because every day pretty much feels like sunday <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> I'm not right. feeling that as much anymore. I mean, I think, I think also, I mean, uh, having my wife and, and my daughter here made it a little easier to be quarantined. You know, we're fortunate to have right. each other. And, but I think, uh, you know, you definitely uh, learn a, a, a lot of new ways to, you know, keep yourself going. You know, at least we had, we had uh, homeschooling for our daughter. You know, that was, that was, a, that was interesting trying to become a teacher. I, I didn't, you know, <laughs> Yeah, how is that? Jeez, I can't. Even... Crazy, man. I mean, especially, especially, um, um, because I, I handle the the math side of things, and Cassie does. Okay. The, we kind of trade off, but the math these days, the way it's, <laughs> it's way different from when you and I were in second grade. Right. It, wow. It's, it's, I can it's, only it's, imagine. No, but it's great. Actually, I, I'm starting to learn it a certain way too. It's like, um, from what I'm hearing, the the, the particular math curriculum the way it is now it, it's it's a it's a way that was the way they teach in in places like singapore it, 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 this style of 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 teaching math comes from there oh really it, it basically shows you why the problem is way it the way why the problem is why it is you know it doesn't it doesn't teach you out of memory it teaches you uh it just it just turns the problem inside out and backwards and you just you just it makes you see it a different way if right I, if I'm, if I'm making sense but it's not like you know here's here's a, a multiplication table you know memorize it this teaches you why you know 12 times 12 why 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 is it why is it equal why is it equal this why is it equal that why is this why is that you know what i mean it's right it's, it's great nice it's great. nice yeah Oh, uh, uh. Like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> you know everything, Roy. Come on. That's what, you know, that's what you have to tell everybody. I know everything. Yaz Yazi, Yazi. Derek, could you please share with us your experience in Morocco? Ooh. Oh, You're lucky. Yes, Morocco. Yeah, that was uh incredible. Um one thing I had no expectations, so it, I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, everyone was super friendly. Uh, I remember definitely not expecting to be have so many metalheads there. You know, like in, and they're the same like any other place that you would see a metalhead in America. You know, black shirt, long hair, and just really appreciative of heavy music. And so this was uh, a wonderful experience to see this all the way in Morocco, you know, and uh, the food I was really excited about. I mean, I was taken to a place where I could have a, a vegan meal and everything very fresh and very cool. Um, I, I didn't realize the, the poverty level that was going on there. Um, I just remember walking with one of the promoters or somebody um, and just, he was just like, yeah, you know, I just remember him saying like, Hey, look, it's just like Brazil, you know? And I was just like, Whoa, I was like, well, all Brazil isn't like, you know, this back alley street here, you know, it's like, it was like really like, I think he had an impression of what Brazil is like, which a lot of people do that haven't been to Brazil, but uh, I was taking, you know, the hard side, you know, but there's like beautiful things and also like very, very poor, um, majority of people. Um, which is a lot of places in Africa, I realized. Um, so, yeah, it was quite an experience. And I really want to go back. You know, I look forward to going back there um, anytime, you know. So, thanks for the question. You ever been to Morocco, Roy? Yeah, you have been there. there for as long as I, when I discovered the Moroccan uh, rhythms and music. From, yeah. from the day I heard, uh, so my first record that I ever heard, oh, Masters, Masters of Jujuka. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that, but they're they're a tribe of musicians that um, that were on Axiom Records. That Bill Aswell from uh, the band Material oh, wow. produced this record, and I found this record 
because I was working in the world music session section in Tower Records in New York. Uh, in like <laughs> On 8, 4th Street. Yep. And <laughs> that same year, uh, The Last Temptation of Christ and that Pat ah. Passion Sources, Passion Sources Ga Peter Gabriel, uh, various artist album was out. So I was listening to all three of those records. And after that, from I was I was really like in it, you know, and I've been wanting to go. Right, yeah. yeah, I love that music. Oh, yeah, me too. There's something that's like so moving and spiritual about it, you know. It's thousands of years old, that music too. It's like a few yeah. thousand years old. It's like the original rock music of 2000 BC. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm seeing a question. This uh, oh, Bruno's back. Bruno, yeah, I'm back. You wanna you wanna read the, another question? Cause we're yeah. I mean, I, I, this is a question for Roy. What? Roy, if you could jump <laughs> battle with any drummer, who would it be and why? If I can do what? If you could drum battle with any drummer, <laughs> drum battle. Not with that voice, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> If you could drum battle with, with any drummer, drummer, who would it be and why? Well, first off, I don't believe in this battling thing. It's it, dr drums isn't a competition. Come on, come on, Roy. It's a battle. Who would you battle? Like if I wanted to battle, if I wanted to, you know, be, like a hip hop battle, you know, like a, I would have done crack and and done that stuff. I, I got into drumming, so it's not. It's about for me. It's about expression. You know, it, it's not a. You want to be in somebody's face, like, no. yo, what's up? Now it's your move. I mean, it's, I'll collaborate. I like to collaborate with other drummers. That I would do, but drum battle, it's not like you know, I don't. I never got into that. I always thought that was kind of macho. Yeah, it's kind of corny. I'm not about that. Right. I'm always going to do collaborative work with with you know any drummer. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a battle. Doesn't that's have to be a battle. That's right. All right. Now I'm back. So, like, we have like the last minutes here just to, to first of all, to thanks, you know, Roy, to being here with us. And I thank all the Sepal Nation for the questions. And in a couple minutes, we're going to have uh, the live version of Desperate Cry. Yes. And it, it, it would be really amazing. And Derek, just, you know, have like a couple minutes to say, a message to the Sipo Nation and, of course, our friend Roy here. All right. So I, I definitely want to thank you, Roy, for for taking the time to be on our special Wednesdays here yeah. with us and on my all of Sipo Nation. You know, we really appreciate it, and uh, it, it means a lot, man. Definitely it means a lot to me, man. I really appreciate it. It's an honor, man. Thank you. And you're a super important person that's always going to be a part of the Sepultura history. You know, you played such a big part. And, um, yeah, thank you again for doing this. Yeah, man. Anytime, brother. You can follow these uh, in crazy Q&As and everything else of our special live versions of Sepultura songs on www.sepultura.com.br slash sepulquatra. That's right. It's pretty good, man. Thank you. I might have a career in that, you know. <laughs> Being in quarantine, you know, and everything. Can you say this is CNN? This is CNN. This is CNN. See? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Hook it up. No, but it's been awesome, man. Thank you again. And Thanks, man. And stay safe and tell your family hello for me. Definitely. And, uh, uh, yeah, definitely look well, forward to seeing you. I hope you and I can like hang out soon after all this. Like, Absolutely. I mean, I, I just come over. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm there, man. I'm there. Hey, well, Silvio. Good that? seeing you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. That's Bibika, Silvio. Oh, man, good to see you, brother. He looks so sophisticated in his photo. Sophisticated. He looks good a beard. Mm, yeah, yeah, he can pull that off. Yeah, only he can. I can do that. Yeah. Again, you can follow all these crazy stories and everything on www.sepultura.com.
Dot What? Simple Quattro.